How's that, guys? Still a little blurry? There we are. I feel a little blurry today, you know? Didn't sleep so good last night. <clears throat> Just one of those nights, so... I think the blur is pretty appropriate, to be honest. <laughs> Happy Friday, everyone. Good to see you all. Good to be hanging out once again. This is my uh, fifth stream in a row. Five day gang. Yeah, Poodle Squish, five day gang. Um, yeah, it's been fun. Lots of uh, good productive stuff this week. Uh, made a bunch of tunes. Um, did uh, the competition yesterday, made the, the next, the first ever B Howard for 2021. Um, I'll probably play through everything that I made this week um, at the end of the stream, do a little recap or something. And um, yeah, but I'm going to keep it short today um, and do some other stuff after we've done this breakdown. So I think it'll just be the breakdown today. Um, unless they whack us on the front page and we get like a 2000 people watching or something um, or more. Sometimes it's more. Um, but I don't think, I think today's just going to be the breakdown. Um, so yeah, happy, uh, happy 20, 22nd of Jan, everyone. Um, there's a, a, quite a lot of new people in the chat I see here, or uh, at least people who aren't subscribed. And um, yeah, the relevance of uh, the 22nd of January is that in one of my songs, um, uh, January, <laughs> featuring Jamie Woon, um, there's a lyric that goes 22nd January. So I thought probably a pretty good day to break that one down. Um, what's up, friend with him? I wish the track said 21st of January as that's my son's birthday. <laughs> Fair. Um, sorry about that. Should have seen that one coming. Um, he probably wasn't born when we made the track, I'm guessing. So that would have been pretty hard to plan. Um, wow. Echo, Echo says it's the 21st of the 20. It's the 22nd of the 1st of the 21st. That's pretty cool. Lots of twos and ones going on. Um, but yeah, welcome to the stream. If you are new here, uh, let me know where you're tuning in from. Love seeing you guys. Uh, letting me know from where you're listening to around the world. It's... Money. Oh, he's seven? Oh, okay. Well, yeah, we, we, wrote, we wrote January in probably late 2012, early 2013. So it was around the time, actually. Shit. I don't think we actually wrote it on the 22nd of January, though. I think we just decided we were going to put that lyric in because it sounded good. Um, make some noise, everyone, for the Sodam. The Sodom? The Sodom? Sorry if I'm getting your name wrong, but thanks for uh, thanks for the kind gifts, gifting the subs. We got people inside from California, <laughs> from Edinburgh, DC, San Fran, Switzerland, West London, Reading, Argentina, Dirty South, <laughs> Sweden, Puerto Rico, Brazil. Very nice. Hello, everyone. Um, yeah, thanks for the donations. Thanks for subscribing, everyone. Um, and if you're not subscribed, what are you doing? Come on. Come on. Come join us. Get involved or at least follow the page or do something. I don't know. I'm so bad at telling people to follow. And I know it's on like YouTube and other channels. It's like the first thing people say is like, welcome back and make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell or some shit. I never do it. So there you go. I just did it. Hit the damn bell. <laughs> I feel like I've been waiting my whole life for the 22nd of January party on the 22nd of January. Well, here we are. Get a drink. Do whatever you need to do to have a party safely. <laughs> I'm personally going to go uh, crazy on this coconut water. That's my party right now. But it is also only 12.30 in the afternoon here. So, <laughs> Yes, day five. Hey, Three Kelves. Hey, Paddy Beats. Hey, Not The King. Money. What does 22nd of January mean for disclosure? So, yeah, the... The lyric in the song, January, which we'll go through in a minute. Um, it doesn't have too much meaning for me and Howard or Jamie, I don't think, personally. Um, we were just looking for a lyric um, and a date and a you know a time to put in the song. I, I think because we noticed there are some tunes out there that just do that, that are very sick. Uh, the number one has to be um, September by Earth, Wind & Fire. So... That's why. 
Um, we were just looking for something that flowed really nicely and would just be like good, like easy and good to sing. Because, you know, that. Daddy, yeah, dancing in September. And do you remember 21st night of September? So we were like, 22nd January. It was pretty much as simple as that. It was, um, yeah, I, I don't. I think, you know what? Every time the year rolls around and, and the 22nd of January has come up, um, I haven't done this today yet because I haven't spoken to Jamie today, but we usually do send a text back and forth or something. And there was one year where something did happen on the 22nd of January that was notable. Um, I can't remember what it is now, but something did come around and we were all like, oh, maybe that's why we used it. Shit, some like serendipitous hindsight shit was going on. But no, at the time of writing, I'm 99% sure that Howard and Jamie, whilst they were writing the lyrics, just did it purely for flow and because it sang well, you know, because 16th of February wouldn't be as good, you know. 16th of February, you know, it just had all the right syllables and the right flow and all of that kind of stuff. Um, lyric breakdown, yeah, that's not really my thing. Um, I've texted Howard to see what he's doing, um, but I'm He's probably not available. He's been working uh, in the studio um, this week, so I, I don't know if he's going to be able to come by. Let me check my phone. But he's he's the one for lyric breakdowns. But next time he's on, we can always ask him as well. Um, to no, he hasn't texted back to uh, give us a little bit of information. But uh, yeah, today we'll just be going through the project. Um, and yeah, that's it's i mean i'm looking at it now and it's it's a mess <laughs> it's it's off settle so you know the, the project's off settle that i haven't gone back in and, and redone at a later date um you know they're pretty let's say primitive uh compared to like where i'm at now in my producer life so uh but you know i kind of like showing you guys that because you know we did um we've done a lot of breakdowns at this point and i think you guys can see the evolution in my uh in my technique and my workflow and I hope that's useful to some of you. So, um, you know, I think it's fine. I think it's good to, to see where it all began. And someone said, do a breakdown of offline dexterity. Yeah, I mean, now you're getting really back in the day. I'd have to, I think the hard drive for that's probably in the UK you know, on my shelves, to be honest, somewhere. I'd have to fly back to the UK to, to do that. But maybe we will. Maybe we will. DJ Jazzy Jeff was born on the 22nd of Jan. That's cool. That's really cool. Could someone, yeah, maybe you guys, uh, can can people start Googling what the hell happened on the 22nd of January? Edward VII became king in 1901. That's good. <laughs> yeah, definitely weren't thinking about that, but uh, that's good to know. The more meaning we can get into this, the better, because I don't have any, so it's better than nothing. Your Pharrell remix bangs. Oh, thanks, man. That's a long time ago. Guy Ferrari's birthday. That's another guy. We are few and far between, so shouts to Guy. Here we go now. <laughs> Journey's lead singer, Steve Perry, 22nd of Jan. Nice, Journey. Sick band. Oh, Apollo 5 lifts off, carrying the first lunar module into space. That's my kind of fact. That's dope. That's really good. The creation of Central Intelligence Group. <laughs> cool. Wow, how are you getting all these facts? <laughs> That's great. If you take 2201, it equals 21. Cool date vibes. It is a cool date today. Great track on in the background. I can tell you right now. This is Alec Milton number nine so this was uh, basically all the music you're hearing now in the background are uh, songs that have um, been entered into the past competitions that we've done on the stream um, I don't think this one won but it was um, it was in the top five you can find all of these songs here oh there's Howard he's in the damn chat all right you're gonna text me back Howard or you already did Oh, he says, I won't come on, but I'll be in the chat. All right, Howie, do you mind typing out, like, I don't know, some information about the lyrics? Just, like, a bit of meaning or, um, I don't know, just some, like, memories of the day from your side of things. I mean, you know, I've got the production side of things covered, so 
yeah, I was trying to explain to them that we chose the, the lyric 22nd of January purely on the base of the like the flow of how it sounded. I don't think there's any meaning right within the actual date. It just flowed nicely. And we got that inspiration from Earth, Wind and Fire, you know, 21st night of September. So we've covered that. But anything else you can think of, bro, just, uh, yeah, type, type that in. <clears throat> Howard hates coming on. <laughs> he doesn't. He loves it. He's just busy. Me and Emily have to try and plan our kid's birth for the 22nd of Jan. That would be, that would be dope. <laughs> I would actually be down for that. <laughs> hey, thanks for influencer. Very kind, very kind. Get Sam Smith on. We will. I think we're going to do a latch breakdown uh, in the in the very near future. We're trying to plan um, how we can get Sam, Jimmy, and Howard all on at once um, from all different parts of the world. So, but yeah, it's. Um, it's in the to-do list. Jamie is the best. Yeah, we were scatting melodies that we liked and then he started sounding... It's that, Then they started sounding like a date, so we chose the 22nd. Oh, okay, cool. So you guys were just hammering out lyrics and hammering out melodies and then, boom, out popped the date. Just as I thought. Yeah, Jamie is the best, man. For, the, for those who aren't familiar with Jamie Woon, well, A, where have you been? Um, and B get familiar he's got two albums i believe in total one is called uh mirror writing i think and then the second one which is hugely underappreciated i think is called uh making time uh the first one i think was nominated for a mercury prize and you know it made some waves and put him on the map there's a song on there called night air uh, and lady luck i believe burial produced both of those songs with jamie which is sick um imagine having burial as your producer <laughs> as a singer so cool man um i think jamie told me he went down to cornwall and that's where burial's from apparently it's cornwall or maybe not from but that's where he was living and yeah they they wrote all those songs down there in like a couple of weeks or i think jamie had written them and then he you know took them down got them produced with burials so that's very sick you can hear all those drum sounds in there you know um like the guns like being cocked and the chain and the coins dropping on tables and stuff like that you know you can hear that in the production of those songs and that's so burial um do you still speak to him he's a complete ghost these days <laughs> he is off the map a little but yeah we speak um i was just checking our texts um yeah because i wanted to i was actually thinking the same thing and we, we, we were chatting back in june um just checking in but yeah he's all good he's very just off social media i think and and knows that it's bad for you and keep, and i think he doesn't want you know to he doesn't want to spend his life looking at his phone that's as far as i could tell so but i think he's all good um we have written a couple of tunes since this day um nothing that we we thought was ready to go out but man i love working with jamie he's so nice and such a sweet guy and yeah just so so talented um yeah i'm, I'm kind of jealous of how unbelievably naturally cool he just is as a guy um he's wicked and so talented. Um, you guys should watch some videos of him playing some of his songs just on acoustic guitar. There's a wicked one of just Gravity, his song Gravity off the first album, which is just him and an acoustic in like a garden or outdoors or something. Because he kind of came up as um, kind of finger style, acoustic guitar, singer songwriter vibes, I think. And then it, you know, he got involved with, into the electronic side of things more. I would, I would love to ask him about that, to be honest, like what made him think, I want to present my music in a electronic way as opposed to, you know, acoustic guitar and stuff because when he played live he would always you know do that and he went from that to burial so that's really dope um but yeah we we managed to work with him uh in between his first and second album so he was yeah you know just so high on our list of things of, of people to, to collab with and i don't think he'd done many if any he was, it was he wasn't really collabing with people so we were very honored to do to do that having him and ed mcfarlane on on our first record was like for me as a fan like they were probably my most fanboy moments of, of, of the people on the first record because I was so into Friendly Fires um, and Jamie already. Here so that was great to, um, to get them both on the same record. I remember we had a, a settle listening party at Jimmy's first studio um, in Shoreditch when we were working there. And um, Jamie and Ed came and Sam and like some of the label and we just played the album from start to finish and all had beers and then went to the pub afterwards and... That was a great day, man. Yeah, a really cool day. 
seeing Ed and Jamie hanging out it was very sick. Um, but yeah, don't sleep on his second album, man. Making Time is just a masterpiece. Sharpness is amazing. Message is incredible. Um, basically, the, the whole the whole of it is amazing. Um, the last track, Dedication, I love too. It's in a really cool time signature. Apparently, it all just came about from a jam. Um, I know Jamie's manager quite well, and he told me... Um, he told me they were just jamming one day and pretty much hit record and it all developed from there. And, oh man, I just, I think that album, um, yeah, I, if, if I ever get asked for, for hidden gems or stuff that I don't understand why no one really knows about these albums, I always cite Making Time um, because I just feel like people's lives would be better if everyone knew about it and were listening to it all the time. I put it on so much. It's great in the car. It's great at home. Um, yeah. Great record. Celebration, that's a good tune on there as well. They're all great. They're all just great. Okay, um, shall we get into it? Howard is replying to people in the chat. So if you want to ask Howard a question, he's he's right there. Uh, Howard49. Something pretty cool in this project, Howard. Uh, uh, the, the bus of the pre-vocals is called pre-4.9. So I don't know if that was anything to do with you. But um, yeah, it's... That's how it is. Guy rocking the NSYNC hair. You could say so. You could say so. It, I need to go to the barbers so badly. <laughs> um, yeah. Jamie, <laughs> too many Jamies in the chat right now. <laughs> okay. You guys want to see this uh, very old and kind of messy project? Here it is. Very green and blue, this one. Not really any attempt to... Uh, color things in um <laughs> but yeah this is it um pretty simple uh we got drums we got it looks like three pads but it's actually just one with uh the octave above and then the octave above that i believe i don't think it's more than one pad it's all the same instrument just i, I just wanted the octaves at different levels so i guess i just thought oh, i'll just have three different tracks doing that uh, one sub as well, I, again, sub in the chorus, sub in the verse, they probably just got different, different automation or something. Two types of beeps, uh, violin, which is just going to be a single string, couple of effects here. Oh, there is another bass. There you go. Funky bass. Oh, that's the bump, bump, bump thing. Yeah. I'll put that up there. Sub, uh, you got some vinyl crackle and then big stack of chorus vocals and it's, it's kind of like an AB call and response style chorus. You know, you got that, I protect the memories and then the, if baby you can't recall it all down here and it kind of just goes AB, AB, AB. Um, and then, yeah, that's, that's the pre first vocals and then uh, middle eight, which looks like I've called it mate on a text to a mate, but it's actually middle eight. That's all of them. Um, big stack there because there's big harmonies which Howard and Jamie would have put together and then a bit of vinyl crackle and stuff down the bottom so yeah definitely not the busiest project um, but I love this one um, I think it's a very it's a very true like truly deep house track I would say in terms of the sounds that we chose obviously most like true deep house doesn't have like a full verse chorus structure you know it's club music but um, I would say, you know, strip the vocals off and you're left with a very, um, well, as authentic as, as we could do at the time, um, you know, very 90s sounding house track. You know, the pad is, is super jazzy and warm, um, like something you'd hear in a Rick Wade track or a Mike Huckabee track or, um, yeah, any of those legends. Um, and then the drums are, it's like a mixture of an, an 808 and Dilla clicks and claps, which is, you know, my kind of normal thing. But I don't know. There's something about how dry they are. I, I still love these drums. Um, there's a lot in there that I would still do today. So um, the, 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 the drums of this and F for you are quite similar. You know, they're very just 4-4 four, four, down the middle. No no swing, really. Quite quantized to the, to the grid. But with really, like, just nicely placed clicks and claps going on. Um, so we will go through... All of that. Um, I'm just going to up, up my coffee intake because um, I'm lagging a little bit today. I'm lagging. So just give me a sec.
Okay. Uh, oh, someone said, from your home studio, do you run a universal audio setup? Well, Howard doesn't. I think you ha might have an Apollo twin, actually, Howard, but no. I mean, I'm, I'm the kind of more producer side of things, so I got all the plugins, mate. But yeah, I'm very universal audio. I've got the twin right here and a Octo satellite just next to it, um, which you can see here. It's my twin and the satellite there. Uh, but you you won't see any um, you won't see any UA plugins in this project because this was made long before I was using Universal Audio or anything. Um, definitely couldn't afford to buy an Apollo Twin or if it even existed at, at that stage. I think we were using um, an RME Fireface or something like that. I think it was called, which is a good interface to be fair. Really clean preamps, like it's solid. Obviously, doesn't come with any plugins built into it, but it, it was good. Um, Howard, do you remember where we recorded these vocals? I think it was at the auction house, right? Because, yeah, that's right. We, we had a day at Jamie's. We went to Jamie's house. I remember that uh, when he was living in South London. And, uh, but we did the vocals. That, yeah, I remember now because he was going on about how much he loved the pub because we took him to the pub after we wrote this. Um, yeah, uh, the White Heart, I think it was called. We took him to the White Heart, which is in a very small village in Surrey where we wrote all of our, most of our first album. So yeah, and Jamie was really into that. He was super loving the auction house vibes and the, the village vibes. Um, yeah, he was he loved the pub. <laughs> it was a nice day. Have you worked with Jordan Rakai, someone said? Yes, listen to the last song on our second album. You will hear him. It's a slow jam vibes. Have you done a session with Tom Mish? We have, a couple. Um, never finished anything yet though. Maybe one day. What does the UAD satellite do? Um, so the the Apollo Twin or the 8 or their interfaces act as you know an audio interface, but the important thing about Universal Audio stuff is they have plugins built into them. So it's the same as you know having your plugins on your screen. Those are all running off your laptop, you know, off your computer, taking up CPU. With Universal Audio, what they've done is they've put DSP chips in their stuff and the interface itself runs the plugins which takes a lot of the hard work off your laptop, which is great. And the satellite just boosts that capability. You know, you have a, um, with Universal Audio stuff, like you have this little meter here. Um, and, you know, this shows you how much power you've got left in your, in your units. Um, I've got like literally nothing running at the moment, but um, you can see here, here's my Apollo twin Mark II Solo. This has one DSP chip. So that's, you know, it's not going to get you very far. You can probably run about two or three, maybe four plugins at once. But then the Octo Satellite has got eight bad boys on standby. So yeah, and you can chain, you can daisy chain as many as, as you like, pretty much. I think, well, maybe not as many as you like, but you could definitely have two or three Octo Satellites, I think, running together. And you would be absolutely <laughs> fine. You could probably have like, a hundred Neve 1073 plugins open if you had all of that. So that's that's the same as you know basically having a Neve desk on your laptop, which is pretty epic. And they're just very good quality. The uh, the interface side of things, I love super high high end converters. Um, to my ear, anyway, they have a certain sound about them, but but I, I like it. How did the Ketronada remix come about of this song? Oh, well, yeah, we should have a listen to that at the end. But um, I mean, we were just doing a lot of shows with Ketronada at that time. We were, you know, working with him a lot. Um, yeah. Why does this stop working straight away? Yeah. yeah, we were just doing lots of shows with him. He came on tour with us around Europe, I think. Um, became friends, mutual fans of each other's work. Asked him if he would do it. And he said, yeah, <laughs> simple as that. And it's amazing. It's one of my favorite remixes of the whole first album. The Flume one of You and Me and the Coach and one are probably my two favorites. Really, really good. Um, so yeah, we were just, just friends. Yeah. Do you miss doing shows, bruv, more than anything? More than, literally more than anything. I can't think of anything else I'd miss more. <laughs> so yes. Hey, well done. <laughs> nice Quantum E7, very good. Do I mix with headphones? Nope. Very rarely. I will, I will check stuff on headphones um, towards the end of the process. 
on like maybe three or four different kinds. The same as I'll check it through my laptop speakers and the, my car and stuff like that. But no, for the majority of time, I use monitors. Uh, my entire kit list of everything I have in my studio is on the Discord. So if you want to see what I use, um, check the Discord. And there's a page on there called like gear or hardware or something like that. And I think the pinned message is my the thing that I wrote out for you guys. So you can just uh, have a look at that. Uh, yeah, me, yeah, you know we're friends of Kate Renata because he sampled me as well on one of his songs. I always forget that. Yeah, his track, 99.9%. .9%, that's me talking at the end on a radio show about him, basically giving him love. And he sampled me. And I actually didn't, I don't think I knew that was happening. And I was listening through the album just as a fan for the first time. Uh, and I was like, oh my God, it's me. I really think that happened, you know. I, don't, I think there was probably... There probably was talk of clearing it or something like that. And that, and it was so long before it came out, you know, as you have to with clearing stuff. And then I, and it came around and I was like, holy shit, that was me. Um, I definitely don't get any royalties on that. I wouldn't want any, you know, it's just a clip of a radio show. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. <clears throat> yeah, it, I, th I think maybe he's pitched my voice a bit or something. So it doesn't sound exactly like me. Also, it was like years ago, so my voice has just changed. But uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it, w it is very strange to hear your voice in, on the radio or in that way. Okay, uh, we kind of got sidetracked there with more questions. So I'm just going to begin, if that's cool with you guys. My stream deck has died, so that's helpful. I will use Streamlabs on the screen. Here it is again. Um, let's begin. So I already kind of broke down the rough, uh, the rough layout. I, I might just color stuff so it's a bit easier for you guys to understand. So let's start with a blue and we'll just go down like this. Okay, chorus can be red, pre. Pre and that can be orange. Verse can be green. Oh shit, missed one. Middle A can be blue. And I don't know, that stuff can be whatever. There we go, much better. January VIP would be a good shout. Yeah, maybe. I was thinking if maybe I would just do a fresh mix today of this whole song, but I just can't be bothered. <laughs> I've worked really hard this week and I just want to have a chilled day today. So we'll just get it broken down. Um, but yeah, I think I've said this before. I think it would be nice one day to just do an entire Money. Um, like remixed, remastered, not remix, but fresh mix, uh, fresh master of the whole of Settle, perhaps for its uh, 10th anniversary, which will be in a couple of years. So uh, I've already done it for a, a few of them, but uh yeah, be like a nice little way to mark the 10 year or something like that. Okay, here we go. So, uh, where should we start? Drums, I guess. That's how the track begins. I should also point out that the levels on this are going to be, you know, really not what I would recommend uh, at the moment. And I've learned a lot since doing this. You're gonna have a lot of stuff like hitting zero, um, and then you know I've basically just I basically just pulled the master down at the end before sending it off to mastering, which is not what you should do. You should not be in the red, zeroed on everything, and then just pull it down at the final stage and send it off for mastering. Um, it doesn't affect the sound too badly on like modern on digital on doors, you know, on digi software. Um, but if you were using an analog desk, it would be bad because you would be distorting on the way you'd be distorting the master and all you'd be doing would be turning up and down that distorted sound. It doesn't quite work like that on doors. Um, if you're, you know, at zero, you're at zero. There is no, there's only over and not over. Whereas, you know, with desks, there's a bit more room for <laughs> maneuver, let's say. But yeah, anyway, nowadays I leave like eight dB of headroom before I, like, when I'm hitting the master, it's coming in at like minus five, minus six sometimes minus eight. This is coming in probably at red. So probably plus three or some shit, which is not great. Um, so yeah, just bear with me on that one. 
So there you go, some nice claps. Um, all of the drums uh, are done in this MIDI here. So I've kept the entire, uh, I've just kept the whole project basically in um, one window. Well, all the drums, sorry, within one one instance of battery, or is it Ultra Beat? Yeah, it's Ultra Beat, which is a stock drum machine, drum uh, synthesizer sampler that comes with Logic. Um, and it's super easy to use. You know, you just drag your sample here onto this box. And then um, if you select multi output here, when you load it up, uh, all these labels appear and you can send each sound down a different output, which um, is really good and really useful. Um, you can see here on the mixer, tons of, uh, tons of outputs. So let me color those the same. Drums. Um, people saying it's lagging. I, I don't see that. But if it is, it's because I'm in an Airbnb using the Wi-Fi I was given. And it's just not that great. So <laughs> um, hopefully it will clear up. I will just wait a second. Hopefully it will stop being such a bastard. That looks good. Yeah, yeah, we had this the other day. This guy was playing Minecraft to 600,000 people at the same time. And uh, people were, <laughs> I mean, it was just lagging so hard. I think it could be my end as well, though. This Airbnb is just like, <laughs> I didn't choose the internet provider. You know, it's just, it is what it is. I am using an Ethernet cable, but yeah, I can see it's lagging every now and again. The audio will be fine. Um, it'll just be the Wi-Fi that, that dips in and out. And it's uh, there's nothing I can do, I'm afraid, guys. So we can either just get on with it or we can wait <laughs> for an indefinite amount of time. Your choice. <laughs> get on with it people say carry on it's better yeah you'll get some lag now and again but i mean look it's only logic and it? it's not like i'm playing a game so lower the video to 720 yeah i can't do that now i've started unfortunately but um we want 1080 anyway we'll be fine all right here's the drums so yeah like i said it's it's just one instance of uh ultra beat um i've got my kick down here on c1 got a lot of snaps and clicks and claps here which I've placed uh, you know on purpose I've placed them off the grid to get some kind of flams going on and some slight you know slight differences uh, which I love to do you don't want them all sounding at the same time so they just move slightly in the you know in the stereo field and just give you that a little bit a little bit more of a human feel to it rather than programming just a clap after clap you know I'd, I think the human brain can pick up on something that's so obviously just the same sound over and over again. It's nice to have some variation, even if you're just faking it. Um, I'd probably go in, in even more detail now and make sure there was even more variation throughout that. Or just record some damn hand claps at the end, you know. Just do it yourself. Um, that would help. <clears throat> um, so that's the drums. And what I've done is I've basically loaded a bunch of uh, my own sounds into Ultra Beat. Um, so I can't really remember where I got all these from KR55 kick that's a boss drum machine I believe KR55 so that's where that's from I've pitched it around a bit and uh, I'm also using the phase oscillator um, which is doing a lot of the work actually yeah so we've got the noise generator here which is doing the well you're hearing it the psh, 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 that little thing then this is doing the sort of attack of the kick that little tiny noise. And then this is doing the bulk of the work. See, using this section here is really how I got into synthesizing kicks. And that's why I now like use um, Big Kick and other, you know, other, whatever your plugin of choice is to make your own kick. This is, you know, 
the, a very primitive and early version of it. And you, you just l use these sliders here to tune the kick and to see how fast you want it to bend down. And that's basically how I did it. Look, if I, if I start, um, if I start messing with it, you'll see what I mean. Um, what is it at now? I don't want to ruin it for the entire tune. So if I copy it, hopefully it will remember. So that's obviously pitch and, I'm, and you're just tuning it. And then this is, you know, the attack. And I'm sending, so this is basically the, the amount of modulation I'm sending that from envelope one, which is down here. So if I adjust this, it'll, it'll change the kick. So there you go. That's a really kind of, <laughs> I guess, basic version of how to, you know, make a kick out of a sine wave. Um, you can also saturate it. And there's, you know, a few variations here and you can modulate all of them and send them to various LFOs and whatever. It's a good feature of Ultra Ultrabeat, you know, and it's a stock plugin. And I used it for most of the kick drums on Settle. Um, and people seem to like those kicks, so must have been a, a all right choice. Uh, here we got some beeps. Uh, those are, yeah, again, same thing. I'm just making them from scratch. If I turn this off, got nothing. So it's just a beep. Could have done that on the synth, to be honest, but that's pretty much an 808 Tom. You know, that's all that's happening there. If you hear. Yeah, that's it. Someone said paste the old patch back. I think it's fine. The kick, I think I got it back to how it was. Um, so those are doing the beep beeps. Beep, 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 beep. And then these are the claps and clicks. Um, finger click two. I don't know where I got these from. Clap three. You know, these are years old at this point. So yeah, I don't remember. Probably me and Howard just recording ourselves like that. Um, so yeah, it's probably just, you know, we recorded a click and exported it and dragged it into Ultrabeat, something like that. Didn't have, uh, didn't have any splice or anything back then. Or I didn't really have any sample packs. Just had a bunch of like Roland drum machine sounds. That was it. And Dilla, Dilla stuff. Um, I would think that some of these hi-hats are probably Dilla stuff. I don't know. E-Lab, Latin. I don't know. Hi-hat dub open. Yeah, I couldn't tell you where I got them from, but... Yeah, this is, you know, I'm doing a fair bit of stuff within Ultra Beat here. You know, I'm doing the levels. Uh, I'm doing some EQ here on that hi-hat. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm always adjusting the attack. You know, let's see that. There's, there's my hi-hat there. So you can see why I transitioned from this to battery, because I think battery took a lot of inspiration from Ultra Beat. Um, because for me, it's it's all the same. It's just a different layout. Battery's just a little bit more in depth with a ton of more um, possibilities. But they're very. If you know how to use Ultra Beat, you can transition to battery in like a day, which I I Money. would recommend. Okay, so there's the drums. Um, I've got some plugins on there. You're gonna pretty much only see Logic stock plugins on this whole project because it's all I could afford, all we had at the time. Um, you got one Native Instruments plugin there which is just limiting the kick. Um, other than that, it's all Logic EQ. Um, it's a bit of stereo spread. Wow, I would, that is an old looking plugin. I would not use that nowadays. Um, overdrive here and there. Bus 4 is a uh, reverb, I think, for this project. Um, I'm using the gymnasium setting on Space Designer. Sounds all right. A bit digi digified, but it's okay. Uh, bus 3 is chorus, probably. Yeah, logic chorus. So I'm sending a few things to that, even the kick, just to widen the kick a little bit. You'll hear that if you're in headphones. Just giving it a bit of width. Um, so yeah, that's all the drums. Um, let's go into bus 10, which is 
Uh, I think it's hidden away, actually. Let me get it on screen. There it is. Drums. It's my drum bus. Uh, no plugins at all on there except for a waves limiter, which is set at zero. And, you know, so without it, we're, we're in the red. You know, you shouldn't, I personally don't think you should mix like that. I think you should leave yourself headroom and then bring the threshold down to adjust. But I didn't know what I was doing back then. So we're hitting zero. I'm actually hitting more than zero. I don't, I don't know why. Probably because the reverb on top. Yeah, the reverb's not being limited. So it's pushing it just over. Um, but that's fine. Any questions on the drums? Um, it's obviously a very old project and I've kind of learned a lot since then. So it's not my finest, <laughs> finest mixing, but I still think it sounds banging. I think the actual, uh, the general vibe is there. Um, I would just probably compress it and saturate it a bit more now, a bit of, you know, give it some excitement, give it some plums. I like that pitch stride. tambourine yeah someone said what program is this this is logic my friend logic 10 do you still recommend that limiter for a very subtle limiting would you use the oxford limiter yeah the l1's great i mean any of the waves limiters are pretty good um yeah the oxford one is is amazing I don't, I don't find it as subtle I, I think the oxford limiter adds a lot of character actually to the sound um you mentioned jay diller drums did you sample them if so where from i just have a ton of diller hits and samples that i've collected over the years mostly from just taking them from his actual songs like there'll be moments in the track sometimes you know that just start with a snare or there's a moment where the drums just happen I've just, I went through a stage of just taking everything. So custom made sample pack there, I'm afraid, my friend. <laughs> I'm sure you can find some online as well though. Um, good example is if you watch the uh, breakdown I did of our song, Help Me Lose My Mind, pretty much all those drum sounds are Dilla, except for the kick. <laughs> and probably even the kick has a layer of, of Dilla. <laughs> I just thought, well, those are my favorite drums in the world, so why not use those for house? It doesn't get better. <laughs> Track spacer or regular side chain or no difference? I think there's a huge difference. Track spacer is more of a frequency ducker, right? It gets things out of the way in the, in the frequency field, whereas side chaining is, is pushing and pulling the volume. So yeah, big difference, man. I, I think you want to choose carefully which one you want to use depending on how you want it to sound. Splice has a J Diller pack. There you go. I'm sure that's all right. I doubt whether it's the actual sounds from his songs because I don't know how they'd clear that, but... Uh, sure someone's done a good job at mimicking how do you keep the kick and the side chain midi in sync just copy and paste yeah honestly mate that's just like a beep just straight down the middle i've explained a few times why i like to do it like that um there are reasons to do with latency and syncing but only when you're using universal audio stuff and this was pre-universal audio stuff so i would say that I like doing it because it's a very short, sharp beep, which allows you to, you, you can choose how long the side chain compression lasts using the release. You know, if you send it a big long kick, like boom, boom, the release ain't going to do anything because the sound is already pushing it, you know, for a long time. So sending it a short beep instead, I find more useful in case I don't want a huge side chain. <laughs> Bless you. <laughs> that definitely went down the mic. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Emily just did a huge sneeze. Not huge, actually. I've heard bigger. <laughs> so, someone at that exact moment said, how did you get that whoosh sound effect? But I don't think they were talking about the sneeze. <laughs> Everyone's saying, bless you. Bless you. Thank Thanks, she says. Uh, Dilla's mum owns the right to the sound sample pack on Splice. Oh, that's cool. That's nice. Okay, maybe it is actual Dilla sounds then. I don't. I don't think I actually have it. Uh, maybe I have a bit. 
but I'm, I'll probably need to download that ASAP. <laughs> Do you normally use a limiter on the kick? No, not anymore. That was... It, I think it's fine too. It depends. You know, if you're layering three sounds and you wanted to reduce the transient, yeah, you could go ahead and limit that. I think there's no problem, but I don't normally... I, I never do it nowadays. I, I just don't. I, I, I like compressing the drums on the bus and putting it through some saturation, which is a form of limiting in a way as well. So I kind of wait until the bus stage of things to do anything like that now. Um, yeah, I don't, I rarely put a limiter on individual channels, pretty much only limit the drum bus and the master. That's it. I let everything else be quite free. I quite like to maintain the dynamics as much as possible in my songs. You don't know whether to buy Ableton or Logic. Ah, tough one. Buy Logic. Yeah, you could just try both. Um, okay, moving on from the drums. Um, I think it's pretty, it's pretty simple because there's not much going on. Um, next up is the pad. I love this pad. So this pad um, I made myself and uh, I'm pretty sure, oh yeah, so it's three things. Um, I can't remember where I got the chord from, but it's called Wave Tone Tuned 2. I think it was a sample pack I got ages ago, um, which it, it was a bunch of uh, Waldorf synthesizer jazz chords just played. Um, so the whole song is one chord just pitching around, you know, I've just mapped it to the keyboard. <laughs> I mean, you can make like 10 deep house tunes out of this. But I've added some stuff over the top. So yeah, you can see here, wave tone, if I, if I mute these two layers. It could easily have been Mike Huckabee, you know, he was Mr. Waldorf Simph. And like I've said, I'm a, he, uh, yeah, I'm a big fan. So probably was a Mike Huckabee sample pack. Yeah, minor nine chord, pitched around. You smashed it, Will Bateman. There you are. You want to know how to make Deep House? Pitch a minor nine chord around. Done. <laughs> um, the layer over that is called Lobby Conversation. I've pitched that up a lot. So if I go down, you'll start to... If I take off these effects, you'll start to hear what it is. Can you hear that? It's just people talking. It's like a restaurant kind of vibe. Um, so that's in there. And then there's some chimes. Reversed. So if I reverse the reverse chimes, you'll... <laughs> Magic. So yeah, I've just uh, bounced out a little chime sweep, reversed it, put it in the sampler, and that's giving it that kind of, uh, it's almost like a bit crusher, but with more character. I used to like to do that a lot, you know, that, that nice buzzy sound you can get from a bit, bit crusher, like that bzz on top of things. You can kind of get that from chimes, but you just have to reverse them. And I think it has more character. And then um, I'm using the envelope on the, the sampler to control the gentle attack. So, you know, you could have it like this if you want. You know, something more stabby or you could have really long. Whatever you want. Um, it's called Leanne Deep Chord, which makes me think that I, I probably made this synth. Or maybe even we made this whole beat for Leanne Le Habas. Um, I don't think that's probably completely true, but so much time's passed, I can't remember. But I mean, Leanne is, is the one singing on our song Stimulation on the same album. 
she's the sample. So we did write with her and we did try and make a track with her um, from scratch. But in the end, uh, Stimulation was the one that ended up making the cut. And that that's uh, pretty much, that's her singing A Long Walk, like the classic song, A Long Walk, and um, us chopping up her vocal and sampling it. So it's not quite like writing a song, I guess. But um, anyway, I must have made, well, me and Howard must have made this pad for some song we made with Leanne that I can't remember. Um, Jill Scott, sorry, yeah, Jill Scott, not classic jazz, my bad. Um, so that's that's how we made the pad. That's uh, where it began. We've got some EQ on there. Just bringing out all that sparkly top end. Leanne Lahavas, yeah, that's right. She's on, uh, at, yeah, Stimulation on Settle. If you listen to Stimulation, that's Leanne Lahavas. <clears throat> Compressor after that. Just beefing it up a bit. Some delay. Very subtle. And then some reverb. A bit less subtle. La, 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 la. <laughs> uh, and then there's two side chains. Um, De-energizing. Oh, yeah. Okay, so I used to like to do this. This side chain here is just standard coming from the kick. 4-4, four, four, as you'd expect. And then uh, this side chain is, is actually a, it's a cool trick. Um, vocal de-energizer, I used to call it. So that's coming from bus 7. Uh, and, and bus 7 is basically um, being sent all of the vocals. And um, I've got it set on a very slow release here. And, and what, what it's doing is basically when the vocals are making noise, it's just lightly pulling the pad down. Not in a pumping way, not in like a kick work, work, work kind of way, just in a, as if you were riding the fader. So instead of riding the fader, the side chain is doing all the work for me. So I must have thought that Jamie's vocal was clashing a little bit with the, um, with the pad. So I... Um, I moved it out of the way. Um, you can see probably on, it's probably not doing it in the pre, it's probably in the chorus or, or the verse. Probably the, the verse actually when he's most quiet. Yeah, there you go, the bus seven. So if I play those vocals with the pad. The and then we have a look at this side chain. You should see this dip down when the, when the vocals are. Now that is somewhere you might want to consider using something like Track Spacer nowadays. Um, I don't think Track Track Spacer existed then. If it did, I didn't know what it was. So I used to do that. It's only doing three or four dB, but it just gets things out of the way, you know. Um, keeps things, keeps the vocal up front, and then when it's gone, you know, it's just filling that space. I do mix as I record. I'm not really right, but definitely as I record, yeah. If someone's doing take after take or something, I'll be fiddling around with a hi-hat or whatever. <clears throat> but yeah. Um, you don't understand how this shaped my coming of age. Ah, oh. well, I'm glad you uh, got a lot out of it. Bourbon funk. Big up yourself. Um, okay, so we'll, we'll come back to the vocals later. Um, like I said, oh yeah, the pads also go into chorus as well. See how it's just down the middle there. Boost the chorus. Woo. Beautiful. Um, and we've got exactly the same settings, but for an octave up as well. There's actually some clashing notes in there. The bass, the bass note of this chord. It's not that it's not wrong, but it's just not great. I, if, if I was redoing it now, I would definitely pull this up a bit to get rid of this. These ones. Yeah, something more like that. Um, I don't know if that ended up in the final take or not, but uh, yeah, I would probably do that. <laughs> get all those bass notes out of the way. They're not doing much for me. Um, there's another octave up here as well, which is like super high, just for the last chorus. I don't think you notice it too much in the um, final mix. 
Um, this could also not be the absolute final mix. It's just, just the f first version I could find on my hard drive. It's so old now. Um, okay, those are the pads. Um, moving on to the bass, the sub. Uh, two bases. We got, I mean, I say two bases. They're all probably the ESP. Yeah, they definitely are. Good old ESP. Stock Logic synthesizer. Used it so many times. It's brilliant. Uh, it's basically a Juno, kind of a, you know, it looks like a Juno. It's got the same ADSR kind of sliders, sawtooth, square wave noise. It's a, it's a really cheap Juno. It's got a chorus knob on it. <laughs> I say cheap, it's free as fuck. So we got the ESP. That's doing the sub. And then you got this funky, more like kind of slap bass, almost call and response. And I'm using the, um, the velocity here to control the cutoff. So, you know, if you've got a red note, the high up, it's going to go bow. And if you've got a, a yellow note, it's going to go boom gets louder and more aggressive as you go up the uh, velocity spectrum. Could go crazy with it. Um, what's it doing? It I think that the verse sub is like exactly the same with probably just a slightly less cut off. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. The bass on the chorus has got that EQ and the bass in the verse has got that. So that's the only difference. Uh, I was probably just being lazy and didn't want to do any automation. So I just copy and pasted it and did it that way instead. <clears throat> uh, then we got some beeps going on. Um, more ESP. Square wave this time um, with this. This is the setting here. Bit of tremolo panning it left and right. Oh, it's lagging. Okay, let me just uh, wait for that to pass. Seems to just come in waves. Um, and if I open up a few like different websites, it seems to sort itself out. So, oh, ah. <laughs> yeah, I hurt when it lags as well. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm not. I'm not going to be in this Airbnb for um, for much longer. So, hopefully, the next place I go will have better internet. I know the sound is fine. Yeah, the, the video will just kind of drop in and out a little bit. So it'll pass. Just give it like, just give it one more minute. Money. Thanks for subscribing, whoever you were. Cult, cult eviction. Cool. Big up. How did you translate your mixes to live? I've seen you twice and noticed you do play instruments. If you go on YouTube and have a look at a video called uh, Studio Science by Red Bull featuring Disclosure, uh, we break down our entire live set, uh, our live setup and how we did it. Um, it's not so much about the, the translation, I guess, of the mixes, but I think you'll get a good, a pretty good idea by watching that video. Um, yeah. What kind of pedal are you using for controlling the streaming mic? Oh, good question. It is this. I will just show you with my other camera. Yeah, Rolls-Royce, what's it called? Not Rolls-Royce, that's the cars. Rolls. MM11 Pro, mic mute. It's good. Um, I did have one break on me after a couple of months, but this one's been going strong for uh, 
a long time now. So yeah, I think it's good. It's, it's good because it's like push and hold rather than on, off. It's like as long as you hold it, it stays on. So if at any point I want to mute my mic, I just take my foot off. Uh, 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 uh. There you go. Works well. It should be Rolls Royce would be sick. <laughs> what gear did you and Howard start your first album? Uh, one plastic white MacBook, not even a Pro, just the MacBook and an RME interface and a couple of cheap MIDI controllers um, and a Juno 106 that we found in my godfather's loft in his attic. <laughs> That's pretty much it. Uh, we still seem to be going through this laggy latency phase, which is a shame because I would like to carry on. <laughs> Uh, I don't know how it how it's going to end. I can see it going up and down, and it was fine just a few minutes ago. I might just have to carry on, you know, guys. So sorry about that. It is annoying because I, I like to cut these videos and and put them into uh, up on YouTube. So whoever's editing. Max, basically, is going to have to do a seriously good job at uh, chopping around the lag. <laughs> I can't lower the bit right now because we've already started the stream. Sorry, mate. Um, also, it's usually fine. It's, it's only been the last couple of days. It's been annoying. Uh, here we go. High beeps. Uh, we did that. Normal beeps. It's all ESP, the entire track, every synth, every single synth, except for the one we made, the pad. All of that is ESP. There you go, guys. You don't need all the gear. Pretty, pretty sure there's moments where these beeps uh, don't actually work harmonically. Um, don't know how I would feel about that nowadays. I'm pretty sure they only really work with the first chord. So <laughs> that's, you know, again, it shows how Howard's ears have improved as well since, since this. Single garage string note. Big up Artful Dodger vibes on that one. <laughs> Uh, and then we've got this little reverse noise thing. Also made with the ESP. Can you believe it? Just using the noise generator on it here. And uh, that's it. That's the build up. Uh, I've got another one called short, which is probably just the exact same thing, but faster. Yeah, just two slightly different. Going through a flanger. <laughs> um, and that's I think pretty much all we need to cover about the music um, and we can do the vocals anything I missed anything any last questions about the music guys did I use that for white noise as well um, what the bass line or the pad or the, the ESP I don't think so I think Maybe the build-up pad in the pre, I can't remember. But the bass line for White Noise was made on Diva by Yuhi. Um, that was pretty much the only like, other really good plugin I had at the time. I went in hard. I bought like one expensive plugin and none other, <laughs> no others. Bus 4 is Rotocab. I don't think so. I don't think I was using the Rotocab at this stage. Uh, bus 4... I can't see it. Oh, there it is. No, it's reverb. Don't, I don't think I was using Rotocab. Play the full song for us and dance. I'll just do that at the end. Uh, I won't dance, but yeah, we can listen to it at the end. What other effects do you like besides flanger? Phaser, ring shifter, reverb, delay. Um, tremolo. <laughs> Bit crush. All of them. Good old effects. Okay, 
these questions are not really about this part of the track, so I will just keep it moving. <laughs> um, CPU use is good, but unfortunately we're still lagging. Oh no, look, actually it looks like it's good. looks good now. The last two minutes have been good. Cool, so here comes the vocals. Um, we will start with the verse. Um, it's uh, So it's triple track. You've got one down the middle, as you can see here, and then one each side, panned left and right. Um, here's the three channels here. We've got a low cut and taking out some low mids. Very simple. And a, a light bit of just logic compression as well. Um, Here's how it sounds with plugins and stuff. Tell me just what I should be expecting. Cause here I am on my own free will. Fortune favors the brave, so they say. There's that. Um, here it is with no plugins. Well, at least on the bus. I could take them off the uh, off the channel as well. Yeah, this is absolutely nothing. Tell me just what I should be. Oh, those are automated. Tell me just what I should be expecting. Cause here I am on my own free will. Fortune favors the brave, so they say. Got some phasing in there, because I think Jamie's so in tune with himself that it's kind of doing some weird phasey stuff, but it doesn't matter. I'm sending it to a bunch of chorus and flanger anyway, so kind of I'm into that. Um, so yeah, just... Uh, Tell me just what I should be expecting. Just a little bit of compression on each one, very light. Tell me light. just what I should be expecting. Just leveling them out. Uh, that's the EQ on the on the bus. Just boosting the highs, pretty much taking out some more low mids. Tell me just what I should be expecting. Uh, and then I'm DSing it with this really bad logic DSer. Tell me just what I should be expecting. The only reference you get is this little tiny flashing light here. So when it's active, it flashes. Tell me just what I should be expecting. Yeah, it's doing what I need it to do. It's taking out the S's, so that's good. Um, some more compression. Which I would I would always do that before DSing nowadays because if you compress after DSing, you kind of undo what you've just done with the DSer. So again, another thing I've learned. Tell since me then. just what I should be expecting. Compressing that pretty hard actually. Tell me just what I should be expecting. Sounds good though, giving it energy. Uh, some chorus. Tell me just what I should be expecting. That's really like boosting it out to the sides. I love that sound. Tell me just what I should be expecting. Oh, and bus seven is just sending it to the side chain. And then this is the flange. Tell me just what I should be expecting. Right, that's reverb. Yeah, so um, just those three vocals. I've got another one down here muted. So we must have recorded four and decided that the uh, top three were the best. Or perhaps this is an amalgamation of, of bits of this pasted in. And I don't know. You can see we did like a few takes. Well, quite a lot of takes on on certain things. Got some stuff hidden. I don't know what's hidden. Oh, Leanne. Oh my God. Maybe there is another song in here. Wow. We'll come back to that. <laughs> That's awesome. Secret Leanne stuff. What's this? Chorus? Oh, it's just blank. Um, anyway, there's some secret stuff in there. That's cool. Yeah, I thought I thought we'd done something with Leanne on this. I just couldn't remember. It's been so many years. Um, yeah, here's some leftover Jamie vocals. Tell me just what I should be expecting. Ah, oh. because here I am on my own free will. Oh, it's just all of them bounced down together. I don't know why I did that. I ended up not using it. So that's all that is. That's it's these three added together. Put there. Tell me just what I should be expecting. Nice. Um, I don't think that the pre or really any of the rest of the vocals is that different in terms of EQ and compression. It looks all the same to me, to be honest, guys. I didn't really know much at this point, so kind of just set it as best I could, made it sound clear, and uh, copied them, copy and pasted the settings. We got a one down the middle here, mono vocal, and then left, right, hard left, hard right. So that's five five vocals in total. And we cannot replay, get the aesthetic or feel. You can see I'm bussing the signal of this to a delay, and that's what's filling in the gaps. So if you watch this bus six here. And we cannot replay, 
get the aesthetic of feel. So, you know, that's just stopping it constantly delaying. It's just delaying the last word of each line, which is sometimes a nice trick to fill in the space if, you know, you don't want to have like a busy vocal. You don't want to fill up every section of the whole song with vocal. Um, so that bus is, where is that? Uh, here, called Big Delay. Oh, no, that's that's eight. I can't see it. Bus Bus six. Uh, oh, it's just that, isn't it? Yeah, vocal delay. Yeah, it's a stereo delay with a phaser on it. And we cannot replay. Get the <laughs> aesthetic of feel. We yeah, good old logic phaser. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, and then we go into the chorus, which, like I said earlier, is this kind of A-B thing. So you got these ones doing the like this falsetto high up type thing, and then these ones, uh, I think lows and highs, if I remember correctly. I'll protect the memory. Nice amount of flanger on there. See, so bus five is is a flanger. Don't always put a flanger on a lead vocal, but it was really nice for this song. I'll protect the memory. And then you got the oh yeah, lows and highs. If baby you can't recall it, you can't recall that. Lows. If baby you can't recall it, you can't recall that. He's got a great range, Jamie. He's like so consistent with his tuning across so many different types of, um, across all the range, you know. Even when he's low, he's like bang in. And when he's super high up doing his like, ooh, voice, he's, yeah, he's spot on. Very good. I'll protect the memory. <laughs> Here it comes. Hey. Today's date is the 22nd of January. Was it kissed as so I've got some automation going on here just to make a little point of difference. Um, I think the pad like bends down or something. Is it, yeah, a little pitch bend at the end of this. Or after touch, is it? No, this must be pitch bend. Yeah. Boo! Was it just as real as you expected? And yeah, all the vocals go completely dry there just for a second too. See, I've just bypassed both the effects. Yeah, that kick in. Was it just as real as you expected? Yeah, just makes them seem like they've really come forward in the mix. Um, oh yeah, and then the middle eight. I love this middle eight. Beautiful harmonies here, written by Howard and Jamie. Big stack. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten part harmony. Well, not ten harmonies, but <laughs> ten recordings. It's probably three parts. Ooh, got a fab filter on this one. Wow. <laughs> distorting. Ah, you know why that's distorting? On every single compressor, on every vocal, I've got the attack set to zero. Zero milliseconds which you should never do on a compressor. Always keep it at like at least above one. Um, that's really annoying. Mm. Might not be that, but still, I stand by it. If you set your compressor to absolutely zero, you get this kind of soft distortion, which sometimes is cool on like a bass or something, but it's not what you want on a lead vocal. Um, I think I'm just running it way too hot. I think it's just distorting generally. You hear that when they're all in? Yeah, 
Yeah, all right. So it's the bus compressor. I've also got all the vocals going to another compressor, which is also set on zero. You should hear this. Hear that like crunchy? If I just literally move it a tiny bit, it just totally disappears. This is shit I just didn't know back then. So, you know, <laughs> you live and learn. So that's called soft distortion. See, we're not in the red, but the attack is just fucking with it. All I should have done is just literally one millisecond. Problem solved. So yeah, that's it's all good though. Part of the process. It's not like the worst distortion either. It's not like really in your face. Sure, in the mix as well. Can't really hear it in the mix anyway. But yeah, little tip for you there, guys. Leave your compressor at least above one millisecond. I'll skip to the second half where the filter's open. Put in faith in your relief. I'll suspend your disbelief. So that's a fifth there, I think. You got the, the root note and the fifth. Put in faith in your... Oh, okay, those are the same. So that, those are all doing fifths. Put in faith in your relief. I'll suspend your disbelief. And then these are doing... Uh, I don't know what note that is. Someone will work it out. Put in faith in your relief. I'll suspend your disbelief. Put in faith in your relief. I'll suspend your disbelief. Beautiful, man. I love those lyrics as well. Put in faith in your relief. I'll suspend your disbelief. Put in faith. Yeah, you can see how ha Howard's harmony stacking has come a long way since then. It's kind of, it's, it's almost kind of uh, monk-like, you know, it's just like fourths and fifths. It's power harms, you know, there's no uh, sevenths or fourths or fifth, um, you know, minor nines. It's very just three-part straight up harmony. Put in faith in your relief. But, you know, it's cool. I think it works nicely over the, uh, the chords. Maybe Howard would disagree. Maybe. Oh, I wish I'd turned that up. That's such a cool bit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hidden gem. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what's this? Is this some ad libs or In your relief. <laughs> Okay, I won't play that just in case uh Jamie would be uncomfortable. <laughs> that was uh just a bunch of ad-libs, I guess, that he did. Well, there's loads. Yeah, we uh, didn't end up using them. You can't recall, you can't recall. Yeah, he's just feeling it out. I don't think we ever got to a point where we thought it needed it, so we just left him out. Free Jamie and his ad-libs. <laughs> no, he can stay there. Um, but we can have a look at that secret Leanne ad-lib. Jesus, that's so dope that that's in there. Um, for those who tuned in a bit late, I, I realized the, uh, the pad that I made here was called Leanne Deep Chord. Leanne being La Leanne Le Havas, um, who we worked with on the first album. She sings on Stimulation. So I must have made that pad in that session and we ended up not using it and doing a different tune, but it made its way over to January. But I think this might be her singing. It could just be more Jamie, I don't know. Damn it, yeah, it's more it's more Jamie. Oh well this is this is probably him writing the melody. He's probably just scatting away. So let's have a listen. I'll mute the other vocals. I 
mean, you can hear bits of the song are already there. You know, he's already kind of half half there. So this is what we would usually do. We, we'd get someone to scat a few times and then we'd go through and be like, I like this bit, I don't like this bit, I like this bit. And then we'd just put those together and keep looping it until some lyrics popped out. Um, Remember in the time that you and I... So yeah, very like spontaneous uh, melody writing. Sick. That's nice to hear, man. I'm glad that's uh, still there. But yeah, that's definitely just just Jamie, no Leanne. <laughs> but um, yeah, nice to uncover those little gems. Reminisce. We would have just had the speakers blasting at that point, and just been he would have just been holding a mic in front of the speakers and just feeling his way through the through the track. Um, I got. I don't think I've got anything else to to show you. Um, there's no plugins on the master out. Just red, just redlining. <laughs> just straight redlining. Um, there it is. <laughs> um, yeah, there you go, guys. That is January. Um, I'm going to leave it there for today. I'll take a few questions, but um, I'm going to go and enjoy my Friday, I think. Um, does anyone have any questions oh I'll, I'll quickly just have a listen through everything i made this week um just a little clip of each one but yeah i'll take a few a few questions how could you have the speakers blasting and still have a clean recording maybe, i mean maybe that wasn't maybe it was headphones and a mic i don't know but it, from the sound of it with it's so noisy i think it was probably just probably an sm58 i didn't have an sm7 at that stage did record labels find you or did you send your music to them um, we have been signed to Island Records for a while. Well, I'm actually unsigned now because we fulfilled our um, contract, three albums. But um, they offered us a deal because we did a remix of uh, Jessie Ware's song Running. And she was signed to Island at that point. And they loved it so much. They were like, you guys are sick. Do you want to get signed to us? <laughs> I don't think they said it like that. Do you want to get signed to us? Um, but yeah, that, that was how it happened for, for us anyway, with our major label deal. We were just releasing on indies, indie label before that. And that was mostly through relationships that our managers already had with friends um, in and around London who, who'd been working in the music industry and had their own little labels. So we, um, we just did a few like seven inch records. Uh, we also released a free EP on our, on our Facebook and then we signed to Ireland. So yeah, it was that, that Jesse Ware remix um, that really led to us getting signed which i just did a fresh mix of and uh, you can find right now on spotify um on our record bag playlist i think it's the top disclosures 2021 mix of the vip so yeah that was a very important song for us someone said am i in england nope i'm in america is your dad's band dark ages still together yeah they are um, i don't think they've rehearsed in a very long time because of lockdown but i'm sure they'll get back on it once things if things become normal ever again. <laughs> How come January hasn't made its way into many sets? Good question. Um, I've DJed it out a few times when the time is right. It's just a very chilled song, you know? It's not really something you'd want to play to like 30,000 people losing their minds in a festival. Um, it's, it's a little bit more... Yeah, like I said, I, li I like listening to it when I'm driving or at home, dinner party vibes, beach party maybe. But yeah, you know, we, we got big so fast that we were playing pretty big shows like as soon as the album came out, you know, and people, it wasn't on the, on the top of the request lists, but for musos and producers, it's definitely a favorite. I can see why you guys like it. Uh, I love it. But yeah, we never played it out too much. Also, Jamie, I, I don't, 
Jamie just never did many shows. Um, he never played with us, I don't think. So I think we knew that we would, wouldn't really have him on, on tour with us very much. So we just never rehearsed it, never learned it live. Yeah. Damn, these questions are rolling in. I, uh, I can't keep up with all of that, I'm afraid. I am thinking of releasing some of the Twitch tunes, but not anytime soon. It's more like I'm holding them back for sessions with singers and rappers and seeing if we can make any of them into full songs. How do I know Will Neff? Oh, um, I just know him through a, a mutual friend uh, who, who actually is his roommate um, called Gaston. Um, known Gaston for years just through music and through being friends and Will's his roommate and I knew that he did Twitch so when I wanted to start Twitch he was my first port of call to getting all this equipment set up and learning how to use Streamlabs and stuff like that they got Will Money. back to the UAD Octo could you suggest a mic well you don't plug a mic into the Octo the Octo is just the satellite if you mean the twin, like the Apollo twin, um, no, nah, there's there is no mic that's right for that interface. It's you choose a mic on what you want to record. If you want to record vocals, there are certain mics for that. If you want to record a hi hat, there's certain mics for that. A kick drum, there's certain mics for that. You know, it, it, it depends. But I'm guessing you mean vocals. Um, on the whole, I would suggest a condenser microphone with a cardioid polarity. I know that sounds crazy, but Google those words and begin your search uh your budget will be the main thing that will dictate which mic you can get microphones are a bitch they're like there's so many cheap ones and then there's like no in between it goes from pretty cheap to like insane and to be honest most of the insane ones are the ones that sound professional <laughs> um so it's a tough world with microphones um most of my first album i was recording things through like a 70 pound akg blue looking thing cardioid microphone maybe not settle actually settle i think we had a neumann by then but boiling and control and songs like that that came before settle that was all akg like very cheap um i would for an all-round mic though yeah i mean the sm7 is great really really good mic um but it's not cheap really it's not actually very cheap my favorite mic is a um, neumann m49 i also love the telefunken uh, I forget the model of it now, but yeah. Uh, yeah, the Ro Rode are quite good. Rode, Rode's make quite, Rode make quite good microphones. Um, they do like a kind of cheap Neumann copy vibe. Good place to start. Joe Rogan uses this mic. Yeah, he does. This is a great mic for podcasts, for talking. Um, but it's good for singing too. Okay, I'll scroll up. A couple more questions. Novation Peak. Synth you love or just a workhorse? both use it a lot friend within uses a peak a lot friend within will tell you some shit about peak i've seen him jamming away on it loads he's pr he's better at it than me i've got loads to learn with the peak it's a deep synth there's a lot of rooting and stuff you can do with it uh, but i love it because it's it's simple to use if you just want to tweak some stuff but you can build some really intricate stuff on there because it's got wavetable it's got a ton of ways of rooting the lfos yeah i need to have a proper youtube dive and spend a few days on my on my peak because I've kind of exhausted all the just standard functions it comes with. That'll do. Uh, someone said, what song on 99%? I, I can't remember, actually. Um, it's a long time ago. You'll have to have a scroll through, but it's on there. Um, all right, I'm going to have a quick recap of what I made this week, um, just for fun. Oh, yeah, B. Howard 12 is live now, guys, if you guys want to make music with me. Get subscribed, get on the Discord, and you will find B. Howard, which is a little competition we do every week. I make some tunes, I make some parts, you guys finish it for me over the weekend. <clears throat> you got to submit your tune by midnight on Sunday, UK time, or like 11.59pm. Voting starts on Monday, and I'll be uh, listening and judging the top 10 most upvoted tunes. Here's what we made. I just made some techno, some like acid drums, I think. Ah, oh, yeah, Emily just told me it's um, Leave Me Alone is the Ketronada song. Leave Me Alone. 
the end of that tune is me. <laughs> Thanks, mate. Here's the bass line. That's it. That's all I made for you guys. Um, CB Howard, the folder on the Discord for details. Subscribers only. So get subscribed if you want to take part. There are prizes. There are prizes to be had. Um, okay, cool. Let me just quickly give us a little blast of what we did this week. And that will be that. Money. What was, what was the date on Monday? <laughs> I don't even remember. The 18th. Okay. Oh yeah, we did this. I haven't bounced everything out, but we made this. This was a vibe. Yes, yes. Yeah, I'm really into that one. Big up three Kelvs on the sample. I got you guys to ping over a load of tunes that you wanted me to sample. And uh, that was a banger. Thanks, friend of him. Big peak time, peak time banger, that one. Uh, the next thing I made, I didn't bounce out, which is kind of annoying. Uh, I will open the project. I'm not going to save that January edit because it should be the same. <laughs> Here's the next one.
<laughs> oh yeah, I love this bit. Feeling that one. Uh, I should have bounced that out, you know. I thought I did. But I will now instead. <clears throat> Good stuff. Yeah, happy with that one. Uh, do you ever make tunes just for DJing, not for release? Yeah, it's happened a lot. Especially over lockdown, actually. I was making a ton of edits that just made it into things like Boiler Room and the Circle set that we did and... Well, here as well. <laughs> made, I mean, I've made probably a hundred tunes on Twitch at this point that haven't come out. So yes. Thank you, Lee. Nice one. Love the sample. Love the sample. So sick. Punching the air right now. Good. Yeah, it's a real roller, that one. I like how slow it is. Chugs. Well, it's 120 slow for me anyway, nowadays. Uh, oh yeah, I made this weird thing. It's, I do like it now in fresh, fresh ears, you know. It's just different and weird, and I like, I like that. How slow can you go, says friend of him. About 120. <laughs> 120 ppm. Nah, there's loads of slow stuff on Caracal. Masterpiece is like 65 ppm or something crazy slow. 65 ppm, I'll say that. Yeah, that's definitely for some kind of rapper or like a more R&B style vocal. I don't know. Banked. All right, last one. This is what I made yesterday. Um, a little collab with the keyboard player of Jamiroquai, Matt Johnson. Here it is. Matt sent me a bunch of chords. And uh, this is the first thing I made. Too kind, thank you.
we go. That was this week's work, guys. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed that last one. <clears throat> I think that's got potential. Need to uh, do a little breakdown there and then bring it back one more time. Uh, yeah, Matt Johnson's a beast. Frame of him. Yeah, he's sick. Um, all right, I think that's everything I said I was going to do. Yeah, I'm going to go outside today. Actually go outside and go for a walk. <laughs> um, I hope you guys have a nice weekend. Um, making tunes. B Howard 12 will be on Monday. Good luck to everyone who's taking part in the competition. See the Discord for more details. Um, Frame of in. You joining? Should do. Could do. Yeah, good luck to all of you. Um, hope you have a nice one. Happy Friday night. Happy 22nd Jan. Big date for disclosure. Big date. And enjoy the running VIP. Um, I did tell you guys about that last week, but yeah, we uh, I did a fresh mix of Jesse Ware, Disclosure Remix of Running. The VIP version is finally out now after about eight years of waiting. Um, see the Scream and Disclosure boiler room for the original moment. But yeah, it's out now. Spotify, Apple, all those places. Follow the record bag playlist. I think it's on the top. In fact, I'm going to update that today. I'm going to put a load of new tunes on there. So yeah, keep it, keep it positive. Keep it vibey. I will see you guys next week. Uh, I'll see you on Monday for B Howard 12. Peace out, everyone. Have a good weekend. Much love. Is it